Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to CBSBaltimore.com. Welcome to Baltimore Blast in the house. Holy cow. Check you guys out. Andrew Hoxie and Tony Dottelli. Come on Thanks in here and say hi. Hey, we just did a great uh, we just did a, a great coffee with which you can find if you click the button that says as seen on. And the uh, the reason for you guys coming in was a campaign that you're directly involved in about being kind to animals. Nationwide campaign. Blast now part of it. Uh, just tell these folks real quick in case you didn't see coffee with. Yeah, yeah it's a show yourself side campaign, which is actually uh, featured here in Baltimore. Um, it's a nationwide campaign. Um, they're partnered with the Blast. They'll be out at the game on Sunday, uh, the 29th at 4 o'clock, where they'll have eight rescue dogs there and have the fans the opportunity to see them. And it's really a great uh, opportunity for us to be a part of it. And you may be logged on, uh, you may be watching this sometime in March. But just think about what was just said. Here's one of the great sports organizations in America, and legit believe it, it is. Getting behind this and actually in the middle of a game, and particularly Sunday games, that place will be packed, putting forth on this. You know what? Oh, this is great. Because somebody may be watching after the fact. Are we going, are we going to assume that his dog didn't take a squat <laughs> on the center of the field and do its business, or are we going to assume it did? Uh, it's a 50-50 shot. What happened? Is. we got to go one way or the other. How are we going to go? I think yes. <laughs> Man, what happened to your dog? You know, you're, you know, you're sitting out there and in front of God, country, kids, and everybody, you know. Here comes the chocolate pudding emoji. Sometimes when you got to go, you got to go. I guess that was the time. <laughs> hey, you're good. You do good soccer and TV. Uh, that is really neat. Hey, I want to talk real quick. Soccer is gigantic. I'm sure a lot of you folks logged on understand this because your kids, boy, girl, play rec council. Um, it is a, a gigantically popular game. And we got two of the best here. If some young soccer players watching, other than practice and stay focused, what would you tell them? What were you told? What were you guys told when you were in middle school? Well, I was always told, you know, to make sure you enjoy the game. Um, if it becomes a job or something that's, you know, even now as professionals, we still enjoy the game. Um, but you always have to work hard, for sure. Um, nothing comes easy in this life, and it's the same for in sports. So if you put the work in, then, you know, you'll get the, the fruit at the end of the tunnel. Yeah, uh, I would agree with Tony. Uh, I, as a kid, I was not a good soccer player. Well, I was very uncoordinated. I couldn't run in a straight line. Okay. I'm serious. Um, but what I did is I went out in the backyard and I juggled. And I juggled and I juggled. And I got better. And, and that's what it takes. Whatever it is, like, whatever you want to do with your life, you have to work it. So that got your motor skills going. Yes. And I did a lot of agility work. A lot of ladder work as well. So, because I'm telling you, I was... I was not meant to be a soccer player. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but but all of it, but, but, it, but that's a fascinating story. Yeah. Because well, I'll give you an example. My own son, Jake, uh, didn't have a lot of interest in, in softball. Was you know okay at lacrosse, okay at basketball, but he was a skateboarder, oh, and wow. I, I let him and I encouraged it, and he'd stand out in the driveway hour after hour perfecting kick flips of mm. every different variety. It made him big, it made him strong, it made him coordinated. It translated right to the lacrosse field, right to basketball. And he had a tremendous high school career because of his version of juggling, uh -oh. which was kick flipping skateboards. Yeah. I guess it's whatever it takes. Yeah. But I want to give him another piece of advice. I'll tell you, here's where I'm going with this. I would always tell uh, my son in basketball, it was Bobby Knight. <laughs> I read this in a season on the brink. Right. Quit shooting the three. It's a low percentage shot. It makes you a star. You'll get the girl. It's a low percentage shot. Get it to the hoop and put it in. What is the one shot you don't want them? What is the one fundamental you don't want them doing because it's cool? I would say, you know, there's in, in soccer, a lot of people are now into the tricks, so the flicks and the crazy moves. And sometimes it's effective, but, you know, I think it's the fundamentals that really make a difference are the passing and the, the shooting and, and the, you know, the good first touch, but really separates a good player from a great one. Uh, yeah. The thing that really frustrates me about the game of soccer now is diving. You see a lot of diving these days, and that's the one thing. Want to just make sure kids know that it's not. I mean, there's there's gamesmanship, you know. There's clock wasting and there's ways to win the game, but diving is just a whole new level that takes the game 
down a little bit in my opinion okay so <laughs> all right that's no but but no look two of the best in the united states are sitting here you know, some kids watch and you know whether you take the advice or not you were just giving the advice on the game and it's you know it's a, did you see what he just did? Oh, I didn't see it. <laughs> Don't die, it, huh? kids. Oh, yeah. <laughs> do the same thing to him for a second, and I'll, I'll supply a caption. Do the same thing to him. That dog of yours, what the? <laughs> Don't let your dog poop. <laughs> <laughs> right in the center, right in the center right of the, the, center. <laughs> the um And again, uh, it's interesting doing this, because you don't want to know when somebody's logged on. But we're going to go ahead and make, make an assumption that you guys are moving forward. Is this, are the games that you play in the regular season just a setup for the playoffs, or is the the intensity of each game the same? I would say the intensity definitely uh, builds throughout the season. Um, now that we're close to the second the second half of the season, right now, it's, you can see that each game is getting a little bit more intense, and it'll continue to do so until the playoffs, where it's at an all-time high. So. Um, we try to take every game one at a time, but we do know that you know the intensity definitely picks up throughout the season. Do you know who? And let me ask you, because I did a lot of work with the Ravens for years, and you talk to a lot of those guys, not all of them, but a lot. They can't tell you who is two games down. They know who they're playing next, and that's it. They're just that focused because the second game down is irrelevant. Is the same with you guys? Uh, it's similar. I mean, I know our schedule, but <laughs> it's uh, we, the game we're focused on right now is St. Louis, Sunday night. Uh, and that's what the main focus is. Obviously, when playoff time rolls around, uh, it's, it's a different level, I'll be honest. The fans even feel it. You feel it. You're more nervous. Uh, it's win or go home. And it's the blood pressure's raised, and you're ready to go. You guys have a blood feud with Kansas City. <laughs> yeah. The owners hate each other. I, I happen to be a good acquaintance of Ed Hale. Let's even take a little bit step further. Pretty good. Ed's a pretty good friend. And I hear him talk about this guy. And there's nothing Ed has ever told me. And Ed would not mind me throwing this out there. He hates this guy that much. There's nothing I could even say on air that would come close to what Ed says about him. And it's the same thing. It's the same with you guys on the field. Mm -hmm. There was a headbutt last year that yeah. was horrible. I mean, bad, injury bad. Mm -hmm. How do you maintain your focus when you're playing jerks like that? <laughs> yeah, there's, there's no secret. There's no love lost uh, in the two organizations, even on the field, the two players. Um, but yeah, we've played them in the playoffs four straight years. We've knocked them out, I think, three of them. So there's obviously a big rivalry, but we, we realize that there's bigger, bigger things than just the game. Um, and as you said, the headbutt, we, we were able to, to move on from that and obviously get to the championship that season. So, uh, yeah, it's hard to, to, you know, keep focus when things like that happen, but we always know what the ultimate goal is. When you walk into a foul situation like that, <clears throat> do you feed off the anger of the fans? On the road, for sure. Yeah, I, I, we love it. I mean, I, I know we love yeah. silencing the, the road crowds maybe even more than, you know, the, the cheer of a home crowd. So it's definitely a big motivation. Andrew? Yeah, I mean, no matter what happens in the game, I mean, headbutts, I mean, that was an extreme scenario that after the game. Yeah, it was. A, a headbutt to the face. I mean, you should have seen the gash. I'm sure you saw the gash in Pat's eyebrow. But, uh, Pat Healy. I mean, yeah, excuse me, Pat Healy. Yeah. Um, the thing that really uh, is, is, I think, is very important is winning. That, shut up, that shuts up any crowd, shuts up the entire team. They can't do anything about it so awesome <laughs> awesome hey let's talk your mustache for a second no I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what yeah. you bob turk um now bob's mustache is it, even though it's pronounced it's it, it used to be one of the great handlebars of all time yeah what possessed you and I, I wore a mustache 30 years oh wow so you know yeah i mean it's hard it first off it's hard to maintain and you have to get used so waxing the ends and how it feels yes. against your cheek. Exactly. Because you feel it. Tell you one thing, it's not exactly a chick magnet. <laughs> <laughs> um, Why is that? I don't know. The ladies, they either they love it or they hate it. And there's very few ladies really? that, but, well, nowadays. But the ladies that love it, they, they love it. I mean, you, I mean, you have an old school, you know, barbershop quartet <laughs> image kind of. Handlebar mustache. Uh -huh. 
Yeah. Well, I mean, I've been working. I went through the awkward stage, you know, about six months, but this is going on two years. And uh, it's, you know, apart from the figuring out how to drink and, get, and eat without food getting stuck in it. <laughs> Um, once I I, you know what I need is a mentor, a mustache mentor we'll get to you. teach me the ropes. <laughs> well, you know, you know if, have you ever had a mustache? I haven't, no. Okay, here's how it works, folks. You always get a second sip. Steve, my right, because he has one. You get, first off, you have a drink, and you go, you drink, and then you go, like that. And there's a second sip involved. Yeah. And when you're eating, you're very cognizant of what, let's say it's macaroni and cheese. Uh, I have an imaginary napkin in my hand. You're constantly doing that. Mm -hmm. you're, now, now, let's say you're eating uh, popcorn or something. Am I right? Yeah, if yeah. Would, I, was if there's in, a, I was in Chipotle the other day, and I swear it was an hour later, I show up to training, and I have a piece of rice, rice. in my mustache. Uh, yeah. The assistant coach is like, boop. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the truth. Huh? Yeah. I mean, it is the truth. Yeah. Wow. One more thing, then we're going to run. The Mammoth Manic Monday Meltdown. You guys won. Uh, we, we in here were kind of mind blown. And you can ask anybody in the control room, you can ask the gentleman sitting over in the corner there. It's like the Baltimore Blast actually got up and came in and did Manic Monday, which for us is a very, very big deal. And then by, by vote, it was fair, square, up front. You all won the coveted Valentino. And you gave it away. Mm. You gave it to a school. Run them through why you, why you did that. We, we, you guys were almost embarrassed you won. Yeah, we were. Um, you know, obviously we, would, we thanked our fans for all the support that they gave us, but it was something that we threw together last minute. We didn't put a lot of time in it, but we did a, you know, a pretty good job of it. But we watched what the, the old century school did and how they did it in Mandarin and in English and the talent that that takes and the skill. And we just felt they really deserved it. And it was something that we, we, we felt was a, a, the right thing to do. Because when you walked over and handed it to this, this kid was like, it was one of the great moments in the 30 plus year history of this television show and i mean that i mean that sincerely <laughs> I appreciate it. it honestly yeah. was uh the second greatest moment was when we found out your dog messed the car <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, you know we've just put the kibosh on it oh, yeah because yeah. now we're two days away from the event and he's gonna all the time he's gonna be sitting there going, coming, <laughs> <laughs> all right folks we gotta run thanks fellas for coming in thanks, thanks so much for stopping by cbsbaltimore.com